Hello, this is Chips Ahoya for CardRunners.com. I've kind of taken a long hiatus from producing videos, but I am back from the World Series and I'm back doing some videos. And the first video I'm going to do is a few leak finder videos with one of the CardRunners members. Lemmy is God here. He's playing a couple tables of stud high low on merge and let's uh let's get into it and see how he's playing so we've got a pretty strong hand on the right side of course six three seven all suited the uh the right table uh, i believe is a sit and go and the left table is an mtt uh, i don't think hands in this video will kind of get into some more specific sit and go strategies but you know let's see what happens and what he has for us So, obviously, completing Beyond the Limper is fine. And this will be an interesting spot. I don't mind peeling, um, and he does peel. This is still a pretty strong hand. I mean, everyone caught, essentially, as well as they possibly could. But, um, you know, I'm typically almost always peeling with a 3 flush and a 3 straight. The 9 does add some value because you can hook an 8 and then have an open-ended low draw. It's even open in the straight draw and a low draw. So this is pretty standard. I mean, I wouldn't even consider folding this. What's nice about uh, these lower limit games is that they tend to be pretty passive. So even if the 7 ace bets and, you know, we switch our position with the 2 eight, I'm still typically calling there in a game that I know is going to be pretty passive because the 2 five is essentially never, ever jamming you. And the 2 eight is like 100% never jamming you unless he has pocket eights or something. So I think that ends up, you know, being pretty standard. If you're in more a more aggressive game, you know, you do have to be careful. Here, we're closing the action. If you weren't closing the action and you could count on the 2-5 to be jamming, then, you know, you may lean towards folds in these situations, but this is still kind of really at the top end of our range for bricking 4th Street. So we pick up a gut shot and a flush draw and you know this is a pretty easy call uh, of course we're beaten on the board here but I'm definitely just going to be calling down um, it's not a given that he has a low he could have a pair and then this is great I mean, he's checking to us and it's not possible that we can have a low here so I expect him to show up with some kind of pair and you know of course the flush scoops being in this situation, I mean, I'm not really considering folding this. We have so many outs. If he has a low, we have, you know, 18, ignoring dead cards, we have 18 pair outs, we have flush outs, we have eight outs, um, and we don't have jack outs. Uh, it's such a ridiculous hand. If this was just like a naked flush draw and we didn't have ace-king high since he's showing that, you know, you could probably be folding a naked flush draw or say he caught like a two or a three and it's really likely he has a low. At that point, you know, our equity is not quite as good, and we would tend to fold that hand. But here we just have so many outs, and the brick on his board just really increases the value of our hand. So let me fold 8, ace, 4 here. I'm typically opening that under the gun. I know the 8's not awesome, but I'm just, I'm willing to open this. There's not a ton of stuff behind us, uh, the nine limps, which is fine. After the nine limps, you could consider overlimping this, I guess. But I'm, I'm just never folding these types of hands. 